In this video, we're going to try and learn two things. The story of how C.V. Raman won the Nobel Prize for his discovery of the Raman effect and the physics of the Raman effect. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible for a general audience. Let's begin. Why is the sky blue? I know it's a pretty trivial question. Many of you probably already know the answer, but for those that don't, that answer is not the Raman effect. But I think it's a good question to start with to learn what the Raman effect is. So why is the sky blue? Why is anything any color? When we look at something, the light coming off that object is what determines its color. So when we look at the sky over here and it looks blue, that means blue light is coming from there. But how? I mean, the sun is over here. There is no other light source over here. So where's the blue light coming from? I'm going to show you two pictures. These are photos of the sun taken on the earth and the moon. You can see the obvious difference. Why is the daytime sky not blue on the moon? Because there's no atmosphere on the moon. The daytime sky will just look black. The earth's atmosphere is the reason why the sky looks blue here. In fact, if you go just outside earth's atmosphere into a satellite, you will see that the daytime sky looks black. So how is the atmosphere giving the sky its blue color? See, when the rays from the sun encounter molecules and particles within the atmosphere, they tend to bounce off them in all different directions. This is something that's called the scattering of light. Sunlight is a mixture of different colors, each with its own wavelength. And how much a particular wavelength scatters depends on three things. How much of the medium the light has to pass through, the size of the particles scattering the light, and the wavelength of the light being scattered. Generally, the shorter wavelengths tend to get scattered more. And so the blues and the violets, which have the shortest wavelengths, scatter all over the sky before eventually ending up in our eye. And uh, that's why the sky looks blue to us. And the sun looks a sort of yellow because that's what's left after the blues and the violets are gone. Okay, so then what about violet? Shouldn't the sky be violet since violet has a shorter wavelength and should get uh, scattered more? You're right, violet should get scattered more. But there are two reasons why the sky isn't violet. The intensity of the sun's light at different wavelengths and the sensitivity of our eye to different colors. If we look at this graph, the intensity of violet and ultraviolet wavelengths in sunlight is less than that of blue. So there literally is less violet and UV coming from the sun. But if you really wanted to see it, you could use a UV camera which specifically shows you ultraviolet light. There's a video by Veritasium where he does exactly this. And look at the sky. It looks very foggy in UV, right? That's because of this scattering. The other reason is that our eye is more sensitive to blue than to violet. That's why the sky is not violet. Also, scattering of light is what's responsible for the color of a sunset. See, during sunrises and sunsets, uh, the sun is closer to the horizon, meaning the light from the sun has to travel through, through more of the atmosphere to reach us. This means light has even more opportunity to get scattered. So even the yellows and the oranges get scattered and those regions of the sky appear that color. Great, this is scattering of light 101, more specifically Rayleigh scattering of light because it was first proposed by the British physicist, Lord Rayleigh. So where does C.V. Raman come in all this? Chandrasekhar Venkatraman was an Indian physicist who was already pretty well established in India during the 1920s. He was a professor of physics at the Rajabazar Science College under the University of Calcutta. And his research was primarily in the field of acoustics, particularly stringed instruments like the veena and percussion like the mridangam and the tabla. In 1921, he got an opportunity to go to England for a lecture where he met the likes of J.J. Thompson and Lord Rutherford who gave him a warm reception. On his way back, he was on a ship over the Mediterranean Sea and the striking blue color of the sea fascinated him. The existing explanation at the time for the color of the sea was that it was reflecting the color of the sky 
Raman was unconvinced by this explanation and he decided to do some experiments and observations with the instruments he had on board the ship. He determined that the water molecules themselves were what is responsible for the scattering causing a deeper blue than the blue of the sky. But remember we are still talking only about Rayleigh scattering. Raman wrote a letter to the nature and got an article published with the title The Color of the Sea. Interestingly, his enthusiasm for his work was such that he couldn't even wait to get home uh, to write this letter because the letter bears the address of the harbour where the ship was docked and not of his home. This incident was what got Raman interested in the scattering of light and what would eventually lead to his discovery that won him the Nobel Prize. For the next decade, Raman dedicated his team and his research to the scattering of light. In 1923, Arthur Compton discovered that there's a shift in the wavelength of an X-ray photon after interacting with a free electron. He won the Nobel Prize for this. Now, Raman wondered if this was possible with visible light as well. He and his student K. S. Krishnan discovered something with the following experiment. They passed sunlight through a violet filter which allowed only violet light to pass through and they passed this violet light through a liquid sample and the scattered light was passed through a green light filter and observed through a spectrograph. Normally, you would expect if only violet light went into the sample, only violet light would come out. But no, they observed green light coming out of the sample. This green light was being generated somehow within the sample. He had just discovered the Raman effect. But what is it? Why does the light change color? You see any definition of the Raman effect and you'll find this word inelastic. What does that mean exactly? In physics, whenever objects collide and you measure the energy of whatever went into the collision and measure the energy of whatever comes out and uh, if the total energy of everything that went in is the same as uh, the energy of everything that came out, that is, uh, the total energy doesn't change, then such collisions are called elastic. And if there is a change in energy, they're called inelastic collisions. Scattering of light particles of photons is a kind of collision, right? Which means it can be elastic or inelastic. Rayleigh scattering is a type of elastic collision. Blue light comes in, gets scattered and blue light comes out. There is no change in energy. But what Raman discovered was a kind of inelastic scattering of photons. The energy of the photons changed during the collision. See, the energy of a photon decreases with wavelength and we know wavelength is associated with color. So energy change means there's a color change. Remember when I said earlier that photons bounce off molecules? Well, actually photons get absorbed and re-emitted. And it's during this re-emission that the energy of the photon can change. Why? One reason is this. See, the atom has particular energies that the electron can take. And when a photon comes in, the electron takes that energy and jumps to a high level. When it jumps back down, it releases that energy as another photon. Normally, the electron jumps back to the same energy, which means the energy gained and the energy lost are exactly the same. So the photon coming in and the one going out are of exactly the same energy, which means they're the same color, which means the scattering is elastic. But sometimes the electron jumps down to a higher or a lower energy level and this means the photon being re-emitted has a different energy and hence a different color. And this change in wavelength during scattering or the inelastic scattering of photons is what's called the Raman effect. The difference in energy need not always be imparted to electrons. It can also change the rotational or vibrational energy of the molecules in the medium. And Raman scattering happens much more rarely compared to Rayleigh scattering, especially in gases. It happens more prominently in liquids and solids. Raman and K. S. Krishnan did this experiment in 1928 observed and measured the wavelengths of light going in and coming out of the sample and uh, they published their results in the journal Nature in April that year. This was a pretty momentous discovery because according to Robert W. Wood at the Johns Hopkins University who reproduced their results, he said that uh, this was one of the most convincing proofs of the quantum theory. 
and in 1930 for his discovery C V Raman was awarded the Nobel Prize he made the discovery on the 28th of February 1928 and that day is observed in India as National Science Day there's a technique in chemistry known as spectroscopy which looks at light after passing it through a sample and the spectrum of wavelengths obtained uh, uniquely identifies the sample spectroscopy is how we learn about the gases in a planet's atmosphere before we even go to those planets raman scattered light is often used in spectroscopic techniques There's something called the Raman scanner which is often used by police to find out if people are carrying illegal substances. There's something called the Raman microscope which uh, uses Raman spectroscopy to analyze microscopic samples and this is useful in biology and medicine. In fact, Raman spectroscopy itself is a, a very deep field uh, with like a lot of variations which I can't possibly cover in this video. but you should check it out if you're interested i just want to leave you with something that sivaraman said when he was recalling his nobel prize ceremony years later when i sat in that crowded hall and i saw the sea of western faces surrounding me and i the only indian in my turban and close coat it dawned on me that i was really representing my people and my country I felt truly humbled when I received the prize from King Gustav. It was a moment of great emotion but I could restrain myself. Then I turned around and saw the British Union Jack under which I had been sitting and it was then that I realized that my poor country India did not even have a flag of her own and it was this that triggered off my complete breakdown. Did you know that C V Raman was the only Nobel Prize winner from India? who did their scientific work in india and post independence no scientific work from india has won the nobel prize i spoke previously in a different video about the attitude that india has when it comes to science and that attitude still stands today for most people science is like a means to an end and that end is usually money people don't care about science really they only care about what science can give them and this dismissive attitude towards science is why we see a lot of irrational beliefs in our culture i'll see you in the next video till then remember science is dope